further memories are rekindled at the final home game against Holy Cross. It's Heisman Trophy Day. Army's three Heisman winners, Doc Blanchard, Glenn Davis, and Colonel Pete Dawkins are welcome back to receive special tributes. Doc Blanchard addresses the Corps. Thank you. Good Pastor, I'd like to express my appreciation and gratitude for the honor and the pleasure you've given me this weekend. Here's Felix Doc Blanchard, Mr. Inside, breaking to the outside on one of his spectacular runs back in those good old days. I have many happy memories of West Point, especially the stadium, but none, I assure you, will give me more pleasure, be more memorable than this one. To all of you, I'd like to say I thank you. Len Davis. I would just like to say that it's great to be back at West Point. Today brings back many fond memories, but the greatest thrill of all is to be a member of the Long Gray Line. Pete Dawkins. Let me just add very briefly that it's a thrill to come back to West Point. It's a thrill to stand beside Doc and Glenn on this very special day, and it's a great thrill to be back on the field here and watching an Army team doing what it does best. Thanks to all of you. What the current Army team did against Holy Cross was to display an assortment of weapons that went from awesome to explosive. On the first play from scrimmage, Lehman Hall's pass to Clenny Brundage gives Hall a career total of more than 5,000 yards, placing him among a select few to reach this milestone. Jim Merrigan, the modern version of Mr. Inside, enjoys the beautiful autumn afternoon immensely. Merrigan rushes for 109 yards in only 11 carries. It's a potent all-around attack, viewed by more than 41,000 fans. All-America tight end Clenny Brundage appears to get in for the first Army tally, but he falls just shy. Lehman Hall gets Army on the board, and then the second quarter proves to be the undoing of Holy Cross. First, John Hilliard, a sophomore out of Plain City, Ohio, intercepts a deflected pass. Two plays later, Jim Merrigan explodes for his longest run of the season. A 52-yard blast up the middle. It snaps a 7-7 stalemate and gives Army the impetus needed to bury Holy Cross under an avalanche of interceptions and touchdowns. John Hilliard and Dave Sherris lead the defensive secondary with two interceptions each, and on every turnover, the net result is an Army touchdown or field goal. After Mike Costelli connects on two field goals, Dave Sherris comes up with a prelude that brings the standing room only crowd to its feet. Bob Outer and color analyst Tad Schroeder describe the action. King and American are the running backs. Just to give the King across the five yard line, up to the 10, to the 15, he gets to the outside, he's at the 20, he could go all the way. He's at the 30, going down the far side line, he's at the 40, he's at the 30. He's gonna go all the way for a touchdown! Great King and Army! His final game at Mikey Stadium, Dad? Well, most deservedly so. Greg has played for four years. He took that football, first and 10 for Army on their own three yard line. He broke a handoff play coming through his left halfback position, ran up over left guard on a handoff, and he ran 97 yards for a touchdown. A second look reveals that Bill Skoda's block allows King to get to the outside. Once he gets there, it's a foot race. King's 97-yard run is the longest from scrimmage since Army began playing intercollegiate football back in 1890. With Doc Blanchard, Glenn Davis, and Pete Dawkins looking on, this has to be Greg King's thrill of a lifetime. Named the Associated Press back of the week, Greg King scores again in the fourth quarter. A big game for King in his final Mikey Stadium appearance, sparking Army to an overwhelming 48-7 win over Holy Cross.